Greetings and welcome to a new video about full wave rectifier design in a controlled form. We'll use the thyristors to do the controlling of this full wave rectifier. In this case, we will use a resistor flow for our example. Of course, we will see everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in MATLAB Simulink simulations. Now, our objective is shown here. We like a design for an average load voltage of 95 volts. We have an input pure sine wave of 200 volts peak and 60 hertz frequency and given here as radius 120 pi. The load will be pure resistive, in this case 100 ohm. The circuit is actually shown here for our full wave rectifier circuit in the bridge configuration. See here the four thyristors, so T1, T2, T3 and T4. They all have also their gate cycle. We will discuss this in more detail shortly. We will Calculate for this example what we need as a delay angle, alpha, that will also be provided for this gate. And then we will calculate the RMS load voltage, the average load current, RMS load current, absorbed power, and finally power factor for this circuit. Now before we jump to our calculations and the required delay, delay angle, let's first look at the waveforms. This is the input voltage, Vs, which is then provided here. And it now has this pure sine wave waveform. Looking at the output, we will see that at the alpha, this gate one and gate two will be fired or will give that signal. And that means that T1 and T2 will be conducting. That's actually what we see here. So that we see actually that the output voltage will come up and then get the same shape as the input voltage or the source voltage. Now, when we need reach the negative cycle of the input voltage, the thyristor T3 and T4 will be then forward bias and the other two T1 and T2 will be reverse bias. And that's actually what you see here. So that's actually the other part, which is then pi plus the alpha. Now looking now at the solutions for this example, let's first look at the waveform in the omega T domain because this is given in the time domain. You see here the Vm is, is 200 volts and the omega is 120 pi radius per second. Now, in order to calculate our delay angle, we need to look at the definition of the average load voltage. And that's given by this expression for the full wave rectifier, which is then 1 over pi, because the full period was 2 pi. But we do full wave rectification, that means actually our period has now shrank to pi. So that's why we need to divide by pi and not by 2 pi. And we also start at alpha, not at zero, and then we go up to pi here. And now we do the integration using the output voltage expression, but we know that the output voltage expression is also exact same as the source voltage for this part of the uh, time. So that means we need to integrate between alpha and pi this expression of the source voltage. So we can actually write it down like that and we know that the source voltage is given here and we can substitute that and that will result in the general form like that. We can now do the integration because we already found the integration here. We substitute the pi and the alpha that's actually all shown here. And then you can get the result which is then here similar to what we have done for the halfway rectifier but now we don't have this two actually here in the denominator. So we have here now Vm over pi times 1 plus the cosine of the alpha. Okay. Now we know that we need the alpha, so that means we need to rewrite this such that the Vo we need, which is the 95 volts, is achieved. We know Vm, so we can now calculate the alpha. So it is now 95 here, 200, and that will result in 1.056 radians. And that will be then in degrees, converted that to 60.5 almost so 60.51 degrees so that was question a in order to get this load voltage of 95 volts next one is the rms load voltage which is then given by this expression in the general form again we need to integrate from the alpha to pi again one over pi here square actually our expression of the output voltage but again, that is exact same as the source voltage, so we can actually get it inside and now take this expression. We also integrate towards the omega t, not towards the t, because that will do the integration and also go, goes much faster. 
So we'll have now this expression, just squared each part here, and now do the integration here by one by one. I will leave the details out, but now you have actually this expression, which is similar to the, what we have seen also in the halfway rectifier integration here. Now, if you now substitute here the alpha, which is found in equa equation A, now we get here the 200, 1 over 2, etc. Everything here we need to substitute. And that will result in 126.5 volts, which is our RMS load voltage. Okay, next one is our average load current, which is actually shown here. This is the simple Ohm's law. We can use the load voltage, our average load voltage, divided by the pure resistor because we don't have any other element here so it's just 95 over 100 so it will be then 0.95 amps question d about the rms load current that is also similar to what we have done in question c using ohm's law so 126.5 over 100 will be 1.265 amps the next one is about absorbed low power that is really absorbing in this load resistor we can do that by using the rms load current squared times r or we can use in this case using the rms load voltage squared divided by r that is also the same it will give you the same result and if you do that you get here very close to 160 watts now the next one and the final one which is our power factor which is defined as the real power or the absorbed power divided by the apparent power s apparent power is given by the source voltage RMS value times the source current RMS value. Now we know that the source current RMS value here is exact same as the source current, I mean, I mean the load current, because that will be in the series combination exactly equal to each other when the T1 and T2 are conducting, and also for T3 and T4 is conducting. So we can say this RMS load current is exact same as the RMS source current. RMS source voltage, which will be then just this amplitude divided by the square root of 2, which is the familiar formula. That is because we have a pure sine wave, so it will result in 141.4 volts. Taking these together in this formula, we get here 178.9 volt amperes. Now, substitute that in here. We get now here the 0.894 as our power factor. Okay, now we found everything. Let's go one by one to the towards the simulation results. This is the circuit in the Simulink. We see here the tire resistors T1, T2, T3, and T4 are AC voltage source. These are, these are the pulse generator. I will give you more detail shortly. We also have our load here, and we measure here the voltage across the uh, source voltage and also the current here in the resistor. And also the voltage across the resistor and they will be also displayed in this scope again i will show you that shortly here let's go first to the pulse generator for t1 and t2 because that goes in the gate of t1 here and also in the gate of t2 here so how that setting of this pulse generator going here in the simulink that's actually the objective of this discussion you see here the amplitude is just arbitrary taking as five volts just to fire it up to some convenient value. The period is 1 over 60 because that's actually what we have as uh, the 60 hertz, so that will be then 1 over 60. Our pulse width here is 1%. I took actually just a small part of the period just to fire it. You don't need here actually, let's say 50% or 20%, 1% or maybe 2% is enough. And here, this is the important part, the phase delay. You calculate that by taking this 60.51 we just calculated. This is a little bit uh, more accurate value. Divide it by the 360 degrees and then also divide it by the frequency. That will result in this phase delay in seconds. That's the formula you need to use. So again, here in more detail, phase delay for the T1 and T2 is calculated by the alpha we have determined in degrees divided by 360 times the frequency here. That will result in almost 2.8 milliseconds. And that's also shown here. Okay. Now for the pulse generator T3 and T4, that will of course be pi radians later. So that is actually shown here. So you do that by alpha plus 180 degrees because we have calculated alpha. Again, you divide by 360 
and the frequency and it will result in 11 point almost 14 milliseconds and that calculation is also shown here so you need to do that here in the same form as we have done it there okay now the settings for the pulse generators are done for our tie resistors so we can look at the results in the simulink circuit you see here directly some labels so the first one is average load voltage you see that it is 95 volts as we want so that is perfect the rms load voltage was 165.5 as calculated so it's also correct the average load current was also 0.95 in our calculation so that's also in the simulator and finally the rms load current was also 1.265 amps so everything is actually as we have calculated now let's also look at the plots in the sublink. First we start with the pulse generator signals to give you more detail about when this tyrester T1, T2 and T3 and T4 are actually activated. You see that alpha which is then our delay angle here in radians. But now here you see the time scale is or the, uh, the horizontal axis is given in time so in seconds. So this is now here fired which is our T1 and T2 pulse signal at 0.0028 second or 2.8 milliseconds approximately which is also what we see here from our calculations when we use the alpha in degrees so which is indeed as we want it this will happen again after 2 pi uh, radians or after the full period of our signal the other one which is then the pulse signal for the T3 and T4 for the tyrester T3 and T4 that will happen here again in the similar calculations at 11.40 milliseconds approximately which is also what we see here so you see actually here that it will come up at that time okay let's now go to the simulink plots for our load voltage source voltage and the load current which is actually all shown here so source voltage load voltage and the load current what do we see? We see here two labels. Let's first look at this first label, which is then at 2.8 milliseconds again. If I now use the value and then calculate towards the alpha, we can also use this formula, which will result in 1.056 radians, which is also what we have calculated in order to get that 95 volts. We have seen this before in our calculations. So this is indeed correct. And the other one is exactly pi radians later, which is then for the next part of the fire angle for the T3 and T4. Now finally let's also discuss this in the Simulink so you can see how we can do that in the Simulink also. Okay we are now here in the Simulink simulator you see here the tie resistors T1 up to T4 our source voltage I will click on it you see I have here 200 volts 60 hertz these are the pulse generators I have discussed here so let me show you what I did there so you go here you set the setting that we have discussed in the presentation these are the tie resistors let me click on one and see also what i have done in order to get the values i have actually chosen this close to ideal so our own resistor is one micro ohm here and our forward resist forward voltage is 100 micro volts so very close very close to zero almost snubber resistor is uh, infinite and i don't have any capacitor so if you do the settings here you get what i have of course, if you want to get more realistic value, you need to also look at your model of your tire resistor and then put it here in this simulator. Now, these are the voltmeters and the current meter, etc., to get it here in the scope. For this mean and the RMS current measurements, you also need to set this in the fundamental frequency of 60 Hz because that's also what we do here. If you have here, for example, 100 Hz, then you also need to change here the frequency as 100 Hz and also here and actually in every uh, block you have there depending on the fundamental frequency you use okay let me again run this because i have done this before you see that actually but i will do that and run this for two periods so two over 60 so do that you see actually here it is running and generated actually these values we will see that shortly that is now generating and then running and then you see again it is 95 126.5 etc we have seen before Let's go first to the scope of the pulse generators here. So let me double click on this one so you can see what we have, what I have. Indeed, this is, uh, let me make full screen. So you see here that if you go here in this, maybe if T1 and T1 here, you see here indeed, this 
time is happening at that firing angle we have discussed here. It's a little bit, of course, difficult to do that using a mouse, but you can see that here it is almost 2.8 milliseconds, so it is then going up if you go a little bit uh, higher than that one. So I will close that, and then also with the same th uh, thing happens for a T3 and T4 firing angle. Now if I open this, you can see here now the source voltage, not labeled here by the way, uh, but it's the source voltage. This is the load voltage, the yellow one, and the green one is load current. Again, you can do the similar thing here, going to the load voltage and then looking at the firing angle exactly as we have calculated close to that. So you see here again, 2.8 milliseconds to actually happening there. So this is also the R alpha. So we can look at it in more detail for yourself by taking this example and maybe change some values and play around and also do the same analysis as I have done before. I will of course discuss in more detail later the other loads like the resistive and the inductive, so series RL. That will be more detailed, so we will see that shortly in other videos on this channel. So stay tuned, and if you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.